the trauma bond. Trauma bond is a side effect of being in a narcissistically abusive relationship with somebody toxic. Might not even be a narcissist, maybe a sociopath, psychopath. It's a trauma bond is the kind of a result, it's a trauma wound from being with somebody who brings a lot of fucking drama to the table and highly manipulates you. And then you find yourself, you can't get away from this person. You're always thinking about them when they're gone. Even when they've treated you like absolute garbage, you still want them back. You still want to have another shot. So if you're wondering if you're in a trauma bond, this video is for you. My name is Ed Baxter and I help guys in betrayal situations. I've coached thousands of men. Tens of thousands of men have come through my doors in one form or another. I've had over 3,000 guys come through the Betray the Badass program. And that's what we do. We'll get you to that place where you make the right decision for you and your children. So what exactly is a trauma bond? A trauma bond is when you're deeply attached to somebody but you shouldn't be with them. You're like addicted to the highs and the lows and it's a toxic relationship. And no matter what happens, no matter how badly they treat you, you always feel like you can get them back. You like you can get to this place that's somewhat better. And then you end up getting caught in these extreme highs of like the good times, these extreme lows of the bad times. And it's just, you can never finally get on the same page. And then typically what ends up happening is they discard you and they leave you for somebody else. And you're just yearning for them to come back, even though you know that that relationship isn't that healthy for you. And we've had guys come into the Broken and Badass program, been with a woman for two months. She fucking wrecked him emotionally. And now he has to get back on his own feet. And he, this happens because he, well, he was easily manipulated. He didn't have a strong sense of self. And so that's what we do. We build the guy up. But if you've been in a trauma bond, this is what it feels like. Here's sign number one. You make excuses for all her bad behavior. She mean, she starts saying stuff to you and starts belittling you. You're like, well, she just had a bad day. Well, she's not always like this. Well, she had to lie because this other thing happened. Well, you know, that guy was coming on to her and he's an attractive dude, so of course she flirted with him. Well, you know, she was overwhelmed, so I can see that she didn't take care of the kids. She's just not good with money, so she ended up spending a little extra this month. And you keep making excuses for all her bad behavior. And you make these excuses because you've fallen into her victim trap. You play the victim all the time, and then you come in and try to be the white knight and save everything. And in this place where you're trying to be the white knight and save everything, you make excuses for it because you bought into all her false stories. And so when you buy into all her false stories, then you start seeing her as her not being able to do anything wrong, just like she sees herself as she can do no wrong. Oftentimes in these relationships, you can't feel like you can leave. You're just completely uh, roped into this situation. Maybe you have kids, maybe you're financially dependent on, on her, or maybe she's financially dependent on you. Maybe you've been married and you started a business. You're afraid to just leave her because of all the financial repercussions of splitting the business and all this other stuff. And so you feel like you can't leave her. Usually this happens because of the victimhood, right? I need you. You got to stay here. You'll see this as well within yourself. Like, yeah, she can't take care of herself. She can't live on her own. Hell, she can't manage her own finance. She can't even keep a job. What's she going to do? And so you feel like you're responsible for her and you can't leave her. Like she can't take care of herself. And this is what the person wants. This is a form of manipulation where they play this game of like the damsel in distress and then you come in and save her all the time. Just realize this is a method of control on her part. She's trying to control you. She's controlling you through being helpless. If she's helpless, you have to give her money. You have to do things for her. You have to constantly always fix things for her. And then she doesn't have to learn to fix it on her own. It's really easy. You're just like her workhorse or servant at this point. And so you feel like, oh, what's she going to do without me? Oh my gosh. And then you delude yourself into thinking that she fucking needs you. But really what's happening is, is you like this because you feel like if you can save her, then maybe she'll love you forever. You'll also find this is a lot of emotional extreme highs and lows. Like in the beginning, there'll be a whole lot of highs. And then near the end, there's a whole lot of lows with a very subtle high here and there to just keep you hooked. And this is what they do. So if somebody's trying to manipulate you and keep you obsessed about them and keep you involved, what they'll do is they'll give you less and less affection, less and less good stuff until all you're getting is every once in a while you get a high. And this is like what gamblers deal with, right? Lose, 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 big payout. Lose, 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 big payout. And this is what happens with her is what she does is she just doesn't give, she takes, 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 takes from you until you're like, yeah, fuck this, I'm out. And then she'll give you a big pad. Like, oh, well, maybe she'll give this to you. She'll love on you for a day and a half or maybe just three hours and you have great sex. And then you're like, okay, we're back to it. We're okay, things are all right. And then she goes right back to her behavior. And she did just enough to rope you back in. We call this the rope-a-dope. And so when you, this happens, you have these extreme highs and these extreme lows, and mainly it just turns into mostly lows with the occasional high, realize you're in a trauma bonded situation. And so because you're always in this victim place, always in these emotional highs and lows and stuff, you feel like you're always the one trying to fix the relationship. And she's always the first to tell you that you're the fucking problem. 
And so your entire relationship is defined by you trying to fix the fucking relationship. You know, relationships are supposed to be easy. Relationships should not be conflict ridden all the time. In fact, my relationship has almost no conflict at all. And then the times that there is any conflict is typically a misunderstanding or there's been a little bit of neglect or her or my part. And we're like, hey, oh yeah, well, I forgot that we need to come together more often. But usually that's already figured out because we can already feel it within. I feel disconnected with my wife. I should probably go connect with her. And then that's usually when she felt it as well. So it just comes, it just works. Grown ass mature adults don't have to fight. And people say this all the time. It's a huge myth. Only good relationships from the other side of a lot of fighting. That's fucking bullshit. That's two immature people who can't come and make a resolution of their differences because they're expecting the other person to be different than they are. No, good relationships by mature adults who actually have their shit handled, don't fight. Why would we fight? We'll just talk about it. Because we care about each other. We want to give the other person what they want. But a toxic relationship, you're fighting all the fucking time because you're always trying to fix something. And you're trying to fix something because one person's taking all the time. You're having this endless conversation of, hey, can't you see how you're acting? Hey, can't you see what you're doing wrong? Hey, can't you see? And you end up telling this person like basic shit like, hey, you know, that's not very nice to tell somebody. It's like, come on, man. She learned this shit in kindergarten. She just don't give a fuck. And you're over here telling her how to be. You know, sharing is caring. Come on, you know, like maybe share some of your, one of the cookies with the kids. And she's like, I don't want to share it. He can get his own cookies. It's like, oh my gosh, really? Are we telling a grown ass woman how to do shit she learned in kindergarten? This is because you're being manipulated. And this is why you're having these problems. You're always having to fix a relationship because she don't give a fuck. If you're fixing a relationship all the time, then she can do whatever she wants. And then she can just blame you for all the problems. And then she keeps you on your back foot, dancing to her tune, and she gets this power trip, and then she feels like she's in power and control over you. And then you're over here, like, wondering what the hell's going on all the time, and you're just completely wrapped up in your own head and full of anxiety. This is a toxic situation, and this is a, one of the main vehicles for trauma bond. And because everything is about her, you end up becoming isolated from your friends and family because, well, you don't have time for them because you're trying to fix a relationship. You're trying to make her feel better. You're trying to assuage all her fears and stuff. And one of the things that she'll say is, your family doesn't like me. Your friends don't like me. And so what that ends up happening is that then she doesn't want to come and hang out with your friends and family anymore. And then when you go to hang out with them, she's saying, you're going to leave me here by myself? And then she'll try to isolate you from them as well. And so one of the hallmarks of somebody with a personality disorder and trauma bonds is they isolate you from your friends and family. Even worse, and I have seen this happen to my stepbrother, his wife would get in there and get him to confess all the things that he did wrong in his life and then spin it around like it's everybody else's fault that he did these things. And then start getting him to start hating his mother, hating his family, hating everybody that he knows under the guise of these people are toxic and you need them out of your life. And so this person then separates themselves from everybody. Now he doesn't have an emotional support network. The people who loved on him and cared about him his entire life, he's now completely isolated. And the only person he has in his life now is this toxic person who now manipulates and controls him all the fucking time. And this is what they do. Toxic people isolate you from your support network. They don't want you to have co-worker friends. They don't want you to go to the gym. They don't want you to have friends. They don't want you to talk to your family. Anybody that could give a different narrative than what they're saying, it could go against them. They're going to get them out of your life. And if you don't, they're going to guilt you and shame you into not liking them and that this is the reason a relationship doesn't work and you don't care about them. And if you did, you do these things and all this stuff. And this is how they get you. This is the last step of the trauma bond is they isolate you. They separate you. They call this splitting. They split you from everybody but them. And they become your only vehicle for validation in your life. You don't have your boss telling you you're awesome anymore. You don't have friends telling you you're awesome. You don't have your family building you up. The only vehicle of, of validation you're going to get is from your wife who gives you table scraps of affection. And so when she leaves you, your only place to get it is her. So of course you're gonna feel tons of anxiety and fear when she leaves. And then she cuts it off. Because she doesn't want you to self-validate. She needs to get you validated completely by her. And then whenever you get in an argument with her, she will stonewall you. She will fight you, fight you, fight you until you give in, even when it wasn't your fault, or she'll stonewall you and give you the silent treatment until your anxiety builds up so much, you go to her and say, baby, it must be me, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll Extend the olive branch, and she'll say, yeah, you're right. You are the sorry one. You did do the wrong thing. 
And so you're always at fault. You're always the problem. And you have no way to get any kind of validation or emotional relief except from her. And this is by design. This is highly manipulative behavior. And so your only source of feeling relief from your anxiety is to go talk to her. And so this is the trauma bond. So when she leaves you, you freak the fuck out. Your anxiety goes through the roof. All you want to do is reach out to her. Hey, why can't we make this work? What's going on? Why are you leaving? I've done everything for you. I've done everything you wanted and you're still leaving. What's wrong with me? And she flaunts a new guy around like, what's this guy got that I don't? I've done everything for you. We have so much history and past together. And this is the result of the trauma bond. You're completely emotionally addicted to this person. Your validation, your self-validation, your self-worth is completely hinged on her opinion of you because you don't trust yourself, you don't value yourself, and you allowed her to dictate your own happiness. And you did it to yourself because you portrayed yourself. My brother, how long do you want to deal with this trauma bond? Seriously, how many days? One day, three months, 10 years? If you don't get it handled, it will still affect you 10 years from now. This is not one of those things that just goes away on its own. How do I know? I watch it every day. This is the business I'm in. 90% of my clients are dealing with trauma bond. In fact, with the right help, you can get it handled in just 10 days. I've had 3,500 guys come through the Broken a Badass program. And on average, it takes them 10 days. If they are with a woman, like a malignant narcissist, and he's living with her, it's going to take maybe two to three weeks. If she's already moved out and he has limited contact with her, probably faster. In fact, the fastest we've had is four hours. Broke it just like that, because it's really just a spell. It's a spell that we can break with the right perspective, tools, and techniques that we can break this spell in just a matter of days, and we have the data to back it up. And it's fucking glorious to see it when a guy like you breaks the spell and is like, oh my God, what the hell was I thinking? Feels so much better. Why was I chasing after it all? This is insane. What am I doing with my, oh my God. That is when we see when a spell is broken. It, it is magical and I absolutely love it. It's one of the reasons why I do this work. And then the next step after that is we get you firing on all cylinders. That takes about eight weeks. Six for some where you're like, holy shit. I've got this much power, I can do all these things, I have a compelling vision, I know where I'm going in my life, and oh, by the way, women are paying a lot of attention to me, which is the side effect of the second stage of firing in all cylinders. And I'm like, okay, now you're ready for the third stage, which is dating. So when I tell guys that they can get their perfect woman, they can create their soulmate in under a year, I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Then we show them how to actually date and seduce women from the soul, become a soul seducer with honesty, unapologetic expression, and from this place, he has this place of personal power, of radical vulnerability, that when a woman sees this, she's like, yeah, I can, I, I can get behind this guy. I know exactly who he is. I know exactly where he's going. I can see the power in his eyes. He knows what the fuck he is. This is what I do with guys. And I love every minute of it. It's so fucking worth it. Taking a guy who's completely broken to a guy who's completely a fucking badass. And from this place, he finds a woman with a good foundational material to create a soulmate relationship with. Doesn't take very long. Doesn't have to take long for you. You want to learn more about that? Click the link in the description below. And if you like this video, you want other guys to see it, hit the like button. When you hit the like button, it pops up on other people's feed. It's like the easiest way for you to share it without having to show everybody you're going through this situation. It's like an anonymous share. And if you want to see more videos like this, obviously hit the subscribe button. And brother, if you're in a trauma bond, I fucking feel you. My soul reaches out to you because I know what that feels like. It is, it'll turn you into a crazy person doing weird shit like stalking or looking at her phone location and asking people. Just don't do that. It's just going to make it worse. Anyways, brother, I love you, and I'll see you in the next video.